Here we are in Adobe Illustrator to create an SVG cut file that we can use with our cutting machine. So we're going to first open a new file. We can do that by File, New. We can open any size at this point. Uh, let's do eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches and say create. Here is our blank canvas now, our white artboard. So we're going to import a drawing or a doodle that we either created by hand or on a tablet with a stylus. I used an iPad Pro and an Apple Pencil and I used the app Procreate app and I exported the file as a PNG. So I'm going to go ahead and import the PNG which is a flat image by going to File, Place and I'll browse for my file select the artwork I'd like to bring into Illustrator and click place. And now you should be able to click and drag and then let go of your mouse and you should see your image appear within your artboard there. I should mention that if you'd like to have the same workspace that I'm using here with all of these tools lining up on the side you should be able to make that happen by going to Window, Workspace, and choose Essentials Classic. And that should put all of these tools over here. So once you click on the tools, the window will pop out. Okay, I'd like to show you what this image looks like once it's imported into Illustrator, it does come in as a flat image. So we're not able to select each color or each element and move them around on their own. That's what we are ultimately going to get to. So as of right now, this is one flat image. In order to have each element be on its own and editable and move free as a path, we need to use Adobe Illustrator's image trace feature, which is here. If you look to the right of the image trace button, you'll see a drop down arrow. Select the drop down arrow, and since we have multiple colors and we're going to create a multi colored, multi layered SVG cut file, this particular image has four colors. We have the white background, the pink flower, the purple flower. And the green leaves. So we want to select an amount of colors that's greater than what we have for this purpose. So we're going to select six colors. And we'll click OK. It may take a little while depending on how complex your graphic is. So I'll say OK. So once the file's done tracing, then we'll want to click on Expand. And so you can see it creates these little lines around all of our elements. So it's created the paths. So we're going to want to go and ungroup all of these paths. To do that, we'll go to Object, Object, Ungroup, and Object, and make sure that you can no longer select ungroup and then we're ready to go. So the first thing I'd like to do is click on the white and hit delete because I want to remove that white background and now I can show you that once we click on the pink flower we're able to separate it from the rest of the design. Same with the green leaves everything, all of these separate elements are now able to move freely and be edited on their own. Um, you could even select this tool and go ahead and start to reshape and, and move pixels around if you wanted to. I'm going to Command Z on the Mac to undo. That would be Control Z on the PC. 
Okay, so now we have our graphic. I'm going to select it all and move it over to our artboard now. Now we're ready to group and create compound paths. So then we're able to save and export as an SVG cut file. So when we're dealing with SVG cut files, you want to keep in mind that your end result, you're cutting out pieces of fabric or vinyl or paper that are flat, solid shapes. So you don't want to create anything that really has too much texture within it. And if you do, that's going to be a separate layer of material. So you'll want that to be a separate element, a separate compound path. Go ahead and um, I'll go through the steps of creating this path. You can see, let's start with the purple flower because we can see here that we have separate petals. They're not already attached to the body of this purple flower. So we want to go ahead and group all of the purple together and then create that compound path. So I'll click on one of the petals, hold the shift key, click on another petal, and then click on the larger portion of the flower as well. Holding the shift key will allow all of these elements to be selected at the same time. So once all of the purple flower has been selected, we're going to use our Pathfinder tool. And within there, you'll see the two solid squares, which is Unite. So we're going to click Unite. This automatically group this purple flower together. And so with the purple flower selected, we'll then go to Object, Compound path, make. And I should show you in the layers panel what this actually looks like here. So you can see we've just created the compound path out of the purple flower. And now we have these separate paths. Each green leaf is a separate path. And then we have the pink flower as its own path here. And the green leaves. Our separate paths as well. So let's go ahead and create a compound path with this pink flower. So we'll go up to Pathfinder, click Unite. We need, first we need to select our pink flower. Pathfinder, Unite, Object, Compound Path, and Make. And now if we look in the layers panel, we can see that each of the flowers are now compound paths on their own separate layer. And now we need to group all of the green leaves together and create a compound path for them. So in order to do that, we what I like to do is select the items that I've already made compound paths out of, go to Object, Lock, Selection. So this way I can do a square selection here and select all of the green leaves at the same time without the purple and pink flower interfering. So now that I have the green leaves selected, we'll go to the Pathfinder tool, click Unite, while it's still selected, we'll go to Object, Compound Path, Make. And now we can select, unselect, and then select the green leaves again. And you can see that they are all together. Now if we look at our Layers panel, we see the three separate compound paths. And while I'm in the Layers panel, I'm going to go ahead and unlock the pink flower and purple flower by clicking the lock, the padlock next to the layer. Okay, 
So now that we have our compound paths, we're going to save the file in Illustrator and then export the file as an SVG cut file. Now we'll save the file, file, save as, we'll call it vectorized flower, save, okay, and now we will export as an SVG file by choosing file, export, export as, And the format type, we'll select the drop down and choose SVG and click export. And all of these SVG options by default are exactly what we need. So we can click OK. So the file has now been exported as an SVG cut file. Let's go ahead and test it in Cricut Design Space. Here we are in Cricut Design Space, and I will select a new project. And I'm going to choose Upload so I can browse for the file that we just created. I'll select Upload Image, Browse, and search for the file. We called it Vectorized Flower. V, G, and we'll say open, save, and now we'll select that image and say insert image. And it comes into Cricut Design Space, looks good. And now if you come over to your layers panel, you can see that each color came in as its own layer. So when you go ahead to click make it, it'll show each color on its own mat. Or if you'd like to change the color, say you're gonna make a blue flower instead of purple, and you wanna change it to blue, and change it to blue, change the purple to a different color, you can change it to a lighter blue, you wanna change the green, lighter green. You can go ahead and say make it and you'll see that it's put each element on its own mat ready to go.